Hello, happy Tuesday. Um, today we'll be reading chapter 19 from Bubble. Um, there's been kind of a big buildup with Amir kind of promising Joe that they'll be outside and Joe's kind of nervous, like should I be worried? He's not telling Greg or um, his sister because he's too nervous, but Henry knows. Henry's also going to be going outside, but he's doing it through NASA. Whereas Joe is doing it with a mirror and he doesn't really know if it's safe or not. Um, so we're still kind of waiting to see if that happens. Um, the last chapter ended a little bit sad. He thinks one of the other kids in the other wards died. So hopefully this chapter isn't as sad. Um, chapter 19. 11 years, 3 months, and 1 day. The nurses smile and I talk in whispers. Hi Joe, how are you doing? Just checking in on you, nothing to worry about. The doctors smile and tell jokes and talk about football. Shame about Arsenal, and they always run out of steam. Hey, that was Theo Wilcott I saw limping down the road. I smile and talk about superheroes. I just watched Guardians of the Galaxy. Quill's on the run from Ronin, and he made a truce with Rocket, who's a gun totting raccoon. Dr. Moore ruffles my hair. Good lad, catch you tomorrow. The nurse smiles. Goodbye, Joe. Be back later. Okay? I nod. Okay. Everything is okay. You just have to keep going. Jim, the security guard, leaves. Keith, the security guard, arrives. Everyone keeps going. And I watched the screens the morning after the billiard ball kid had died. I feel bad about it. It's not because I don't care about him. It's, it's that I can't stop thinking about the most exciting thing in my life, going outside. I check my phone every 10 minutes, but Amir doesn't send me a message. Where is he going to take me? It'll be too late to go and see a movie, and we can't go to the shops because they'll be closed too. But even if they were open, I don't think I would want to go there anyway. I want to go outside and see real things. I don't want to get out of this room and swap it for another one. In the middle of the morning, some nurses and doctors I don't know gather by reception. They stand in little groups talking and laughing. The lift door opens. A girl in a wheelchair is being pushed out of the ward. Her mom and dad are walking behind her smiling. She's got an oxygen tank by the side of her, white tape on her lip, and a tube going up her nose. The doctors and nurses gather around her, then shake her hands with her mom and dad. Keith walks over to them. I think he's going to tell them to move on, and they're all in the way. But he puts his hand in his pocket and pulls out his phone. The nurse and the doctor stand on either side of the girl. Keith holds up his phone. I think he says, say cheese. They all smile. Keith takes a picture. A nurse hugs the girl. Dr. Houston shakes her dad's hand. Her mom wipes her eyes. They all walk toward the door. An ambulance pulls up outside. The girl and her parents get in the back of the ambulance pulls away. She's gone home. I glance up at the clock. There's only 16 hours left until I go outside, but I haven't heard from Amir. I glance at my phone again. My heart jumps when the Skype light flashes on my laptop. I look at the screen. It's a message from Henry. Hey, Joe, how are you doing? Geez, I can't keep still like I've got worms in my belly. I laugh and I go to reply, but Henry's pen is still scribbling away. Gonna be huge. Dad just called. He's gonna watch it on TV with the guys on the rig. Joe, are you there? Sounds great. Ah, there you are. You gonna watch me too? Of course. Amir left me instructions. Are you getting ready? No, Amir's not here. Not heard anything. So, what have you been doing? Watching the screens? Yes. Anything happen? A girl just went home. Great. I look at the screen and think of telling Henry about the billiard ball kid, and he seems too excited to tell him that someone has died. The pens pencil scribbles again. Joe, you okay? Yes. Why? Thought you'd be hyper like me. You scared? It's okay. I am too. Can't stop peeing. It's not, it's not that. What is it then? You should be buzzing. I know. My fingers hover over the keys. Sorry, just something happened. What? Not sure whether to tell you. You've got to now. Okay, the billiard ball kid died. Oh, really sorry. Feel really bad about being excited for going outside. The pencil scribbles on the screen. Henry's either writing loads or he's deleted something and started again. I glance at my phone. Still no message from Amir. My laptop dilutes again. Joe, sounds bad, but you gotta stop thinking about it. People die all the time. You and me will. Could be today, could be tomorrow. We both know it doesn't fix us. We could be dead real soon. I know. Sorry. Bit blunt. Mom, and Mom said I get it from Dad. It's okay. Just saying. We got to go. Could die outside. Could die in our beds. Crap, Joe. Why are we even talking about this? We're going for the best trip ever. Sorry, just think about dying a lot. Don't you? Yeah, but not now. I look at the screen. Henry isn't typing and I don't know what to write. I wish I hadn't said anything now. I wish Henry would say something. I'm scared I've stopped him from wanting to go out too. I hover my fingers over the keys and the pen starts to scribble. Then I stop. 
You've got to go. A superhero can't save anyone if he's inside all of his life. I giggle. Henry's right. I have to go. I can't just sit here my whole life dreaming and imagining and worrying. Switch to screen. Why? Because I said so and I want to show you something. We switch to screen. Ta-da! I laugh. Henry smiles at me through the glass of his visor and wraps his knuckles around the top of his helmet. A hundred percent polycarbonite. What do you think? I'd, I think you look like you're stuck in a goldfish bowl. So I don't look like a melon? That too. Henry takes off his helmet and blows out his cheeks. It's really heavy, he says, and hot. Have you got yours? No, Amir's bringing it tonight. Henry leans toward the camera like he's only seen... Like he's only just seen me. Holy crap, Joe. You're as white as a ghost. I know. I'm really nervous. You'll be okay. It's just your anxiety. I'm anxious too. But your suit is designed by NASA. So? Yours is designed by a guy who's obsessed with aliens. It's cool. You think so? Of course. My suit's great, but you're going to be full of loads of weird stuff. I know, but I can't stop shaking. You know what to do. I smile at Henry's face puffs out oh, and takes a deep breath like he's going to blow up a balloon. I've tried that. What about the humming? I tried that too. It's okay. I can't stop shaking either. He picks up his laptop and shakes it. Look, it's been like an earthquake all day. I can't believe he's so happy and hyper, but he always is. The only time he gets down is when the Philadelphia Eagles lose, but even then it only takes a few minutes before he's laughing again. He puts his laptop down in his bed. I'm serious, he says. Been like this all day, but I can't wait. My phone buzzes. Henry asks me who it is. I read the message from Amir. Joe, make sure you rest. Don't worry about the temperature drops and your room starts to feel like a fridge. It should stop at 11 degrees, and if it doesn't, I'll bring an ice pack. Awesome. He's awesome. Henry leans over and picks up a folder. All I get is algorithm and data sheets. My phone buzzes again. What's he saying now? Don't worry if the instructions don't go to your head. I carry them in mine. See, Joe, you've got nothing to worry about. This guy's got it all planned. Do you really think so? Of course. What are you texting? I'm asking him where he is. I send my message. My phone buzzes straight away. What's he say? He says he's shopping in Sanbury's. It's a supermarket. I take a deep breath. Henry taps his fingers on the screen. Hey, don't look so worried. People gotta eat. Maybe he's making a picnic for your trip. I don't need one. Gonna be stopping at a burger at McDonald's. Do you think they'll let you? I think about what Greg said. Doubt it. Don't care. All I want to do is go out. NASA said there's going to be so many cars it's going to be like the president's motorcade. Can't wait to see it. I'll give you a wave. Or one of these. He holds up his finger. Ha ha. His eyes flick to the side of the screen and back at me. Hang on, I think Brett's coming. Shall I go? No, not yet. He'll be a while. Getting stuff ready for last minute tests and stuff. And then I've got to rest. Just means I won't be able to talk for a while. So we can't chat after I've been outside? Not supposed to, but try and stop me. I wait for Henry to say something else, but he just looks into the camera for a moment. I think the internet has frozen. But his hair is moving from the fan. Henry wrote, wrote wrong. Nothing, just thinking. What about? It's stupid. I should be grateful. Just wish we could both be out together. It'd be fun, both of us. Be like Halloween. Me dress as a spaceman, you dress like an alien. I laugh. Just a pain. We're 3,500 miles apart. I know. Henry looks toward the door. Couple of minutes, buddy, says Brett. Henry nods. You heard? Yes. Henry blinks and then leans close to the screen. Hey, Joe, don't worry. You're going to be okay. I nod. I think you will be too. Ha. Huh. We could be in a film. I swallow hard. Hey, Henry? Yeah? I'll pretend you're walking next to me. Me too, man. Oh, and Joe? What? Don't forget to breathe. Don't want you passing out and missing everything. And you. Catch you later, he says. Catch you later. The screen goes blank. I lie back on my bed and look at the ceiling. My heart thuds in my chest. I can't believe it's going to happen. Me and Henry are actually going outside. I watch the screens for a while after Henry's gone, but I can't concentrate. People move around in blurry silence, and then I watch Thor. All I can see is flames and black clouds. I try to rest like Amir told me to, but it's hard when all I can think about is me and Henry going outside. It's 7 o'clock, and I get a new post from Hannah. BBC Bubble Boy Forum, Saturday, August 28th, 7 p.m. Dear Joe, I finished my homework, and now I'm checking my messages. You haven't replied. I hope I didn't say anything wrong. I just wanted to tell you... I'm going to my grand's house for her birthday. She lives in Wales. She hasn't got internet and only has one phone, so it isn't great. So I may not be able to write for you for a while. I told her friend that I was talking to you. She laughed and said, what was the point in talking to someone who could never go out? But I don't care. You don't have to go out with someone to be your friend, do you? I hope you are okay. Hannah. I write back. Dear Hannah, sorry I didn't reply. No, you didn't upset me. Things have just been really busy. 
one of the things is sad and the other thing is really exciting and I wish I could tell you what it is, but I can't. I might be able to tell you after. I'm glad you like Wolverine. I collect the comics and I've seen two of the movies. There's a new one coming out in September. My sister is going to buy it for me on DVD, but I'm not sure if I can wait till then. I like what you can see from your window. It sounds really different from mine. Sometimes I dream that I'm in a hospital roof and I can see across all the lakes and parks around London. I dream a lot. I can't write much more because I have to save my energy. Something exciting is happening, but I can't tell anyone. I think I already said that. Joe. P.S. Have a nice time at your grand's. I lie back down on my bed. I know I need sleep and I need to save my energy, but I'm going outside for the first time in my life and there's no way I can keep still. I pretend I'm asleep when a nurse comes in to check on me at midnight. She doesn't talk. She just catch it, checks the monitor. She doesn't seem to notice my heart rate. She doesn't seem to notice how deeply I'm breathing. All she does is stand at my bed for a minute and then dims the lights. I don't remember falling asleep, but it's the air conditioner clicking that wakes me up. I turn my head. My eyes are blurry. Room temp, 18 degrees Celsius. Air purity, 98%. The air conditioner clicks again. The numbers change and I blink. Room temp, 17 degrees Celsius. Room temp, 16 degrees Celsius. It's going down again, just like Amir said it would. Heart rate, 87. Room temp, 15. 14. It's decreasing every time I take a breath. 13. It's never been that low. The alarm should be ringing, but Amir must have overridden it. I shiver as if someone's poured ice down my back. Heart rate, 91. I send Amir a message in my head. I hope you know what you're doing. I hope you've checked everything. What if he hasn't? What if the t temperature drops and I become tired? My white cell might decrease and my skin will start to wrinkle and fall off like a snake. My eyes will turn into crystals. My lungs will turn to lead. My nose will start bleeding and I'll go unconscious. I sit down on my bed. I can't breathe and my heart is beating so hard it's like I'm trying to burst its way through my ribs. I pick up my phone. Amir, I don't think we should do this. I wait five minutes. He doesn't reply. My stomach cramps. I run to the bathroom and see myself in the mirror. My face is pale and sweat is running down my face and dripping down my neck. The air conditioner clicks again. I don't want to go. I might be a polar bear that I saw on TV. He'd been in this cage for so long that he'd want to walk around in a circle at the same spot. I wrap my arm around my stomach. It's too cold. I'll freeze. I'm going to die breathing real air. My head goes dizzy. I grab hold of the sink to stop myself from falling over. Stay calm. Take deep breaths. Take deep breaths. It's not working. I lean over and puke in the toilet. My phone vibrates and I go to the floor. Don't worry. The temperature will stop at 11. I try to reply, but I can't tap the letters right. I shake my head and try again. Amir, I'm scared. It's okay. Even superheroes are allowed to be scared. The monitors beep. I stand up and rest against the door. The figures are changing on the monitors. Room temp, 11 degrees Celsius. Air purity, 98.4%. Heart rate, 96. My phone buzzes again. Joe, I'm on my way. And that is the end of chapter 19. Really left us off on a cliffhanger. Um, it seems like maybe the next chapter we'll actually get to see Joe go outside. Even though he's a little scared, he's still. I think he's still going to be going through with it. So I'm excited to read chapter 20 tomorrow.